Hey guys, what's going on? It's Dave from Evil Eye Games. Today I'm going to do something I generally recommend against, but the situation warrants it. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to upgrade our project to the newest version of Unreal Engine. Now, in general, I don't recommend upgrading the version of a project. The reason standing is it can cause a whole lot of issues in the background and it can break a lot of things operating in your game. There's a lot of variables and settings that go on in the background and if the defaults for these change from engine version to engine version you can have an issue. Also if base actors are changed that some of our stuff is based off of that can cause pretty big issues as well. On the whole I generally don't recommend upgrading to a newer version of the engine on an existing project. The only exception to that is if there's something in a newer release version that you end up needing. And the last video I mentioned that we were going to use a plugin in order to adjust our sound levels. And in taking a look at it, I found out that what we're going to be using the plugin for makes the plugin obsolete with the newest version of the engine. So there's actually something in the newest version of the engine that I really want to use and from future versions on will be incorporated as opposed to using an outdated plugin that is likely not going to be supported anymore. So if you're contemplating upgrading a project before doing anything I would highly recommend going to Unreal's website and looking at the release notes for the versions of the engine in between what version you have and the version you want to upgrade to. And really determine if there's something in there you need for your project. If there's a bunch of stuff in there that you don't understand or you don't know what it does or you do know what it does and it doesn't add to your project, there's really no reason to go out of your way in order to upgrade the engine version your project runs on. Now in this case there is something in there that I absolutely want to use and something that's going to be usable in future iterations of the engine. So if somebody's looking at this in the future from recording this video, it's going to be available to them and they won't have to struggle with attempting to use a plugin that's no longer going to work for their engine version. So once you've determined that you want to upgrade the project and that you need to upgrade the project, we can easily do this by adding the version if it's not already downloaded. And Unreal Engine allows you to have multiple versions of the engine installed at any given time. So at the top here, you'll see that I have both the 4.10, the 4.11, and the 4.12.5 version. And I'm going to be upgrading to the 4.12.5 version because there's a new feature in the 4.12 that is offered that will allow us to adjust the sound volumes. And if you need to add a version, uh, at the top here, there's the Add Version button. And it'll give you this grayed out selection here. And you can go ahead and pick the version number that you want to run. And generally, it'll give you the latest subversion of that specific version. So they don't include in here uh, 4.12.1 or 4.12.2. They'll give the latest version of that version number. For 4.12, if you go to download it at the time of the making of this video, you're going to have 4.12.5 available. And another note is upgrading within version numbers is usually perfectly fine. So if you're running version 4.12.5 and 4.12.6 comes out, there's generally not going to be a problem with upgrading to the 12.6 version. The real issues only really come about when going from the major versions, so from 4.12 to if it launches 4.13. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close that. I've already downloaded the version. Uh, it's going to take a while to download, so once you've downloaded it, it'll give you the option here to launch that version. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on launch. And it's going to go ahead and start up the editor for us. And it'll show all of our projects. And all of our projects are, at least in my case, they're all grayed out because they're all running on a different version. 
So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select our third person cover and I'm going to go ahead and hit open. And it's going to prompt us with a message that's going to tell us, hey, this project was made with a different version. You always want to use the open a copy version of it. You never want to get rid of your original because if you run into issues that you can't solve, you need something to fall back onto. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to click open a copy and it's going to go ahead and create a version of our project that is based on the 4.12.5 engine. Now I've already tested this and I found pretty much everything works as expected. Um, there are a couple of minor issues that crop up with it. Uh, one for convenience note is uh, Unreal has a tendency to not delete folders when you delete things in the uh, content browser. So right here I can see that we have stuff that we had deleted previously, but the folders still show up. So if we want to take care of that, uh, for example, this Pro Sound Collection here, there's nothing in here because I moved everything out of that folder. I can click on the folder and right click and show an explorer. And this is going to show the Windows Explorer version of it. And I can move up a folder. And this is going to show our entire content folder, which is going to mirror what's in our content browser, plus a few additional things. So for the Pro Sound Collection here, I can just go ahead and end up deleting this. And the Rifle Anim Set Pro, I know this is empty. Uh, Always verify in your content browser before you delete anything. So I have nothing in these folders. They're just empty folders. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete that. And this user interface SFX, that is an old folder. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that as well. And there are a couple additional folders in here that you don't want to delete. There's going to be the collections folder and the developers folder and you want to leave those in place so don't mess around with those whatsoever just leave them as they are but any of the other folders that aren't in your content browser here any longer you can go ahead and delete those after you verify that they're actually empty and we're going to go ahead and close out of the project and if we open up our 4.12 version of it those folders should be gone And once you have it set up, you're going to want to go ahead and test everything. So I'm going to open up our main menu map first. And, or I'm sorry, I'm going to open up our test map. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add some more of these AI guys in here. So I'm going to duplicate these guys. And I'm going to set them to have different options. So I'll set one to cover, one to heavy, and one to assault to make sure that they all function the way they're supposed to. And then we're just going to go ahead and reload the main menu and we're going to save this. And we can go ahead and test things out. Um, one thing I've noticed in the newer version here is it automatically resets everything to default. So if you are launching from the editor, you're going to have to go ahead and change that again. So in play, I'm going to set this to run in a standalone game. And we'll notice first off that it is not launching with our save settings. If we go into our window here, it's not showing the cursor either. And if we click on the settings, all of a sudden it shows our mouse cursor. And let's go ahead and hit the apply button. And I'm going to mess around with these settings and we want to make sure that everything saves. And I'll crank this down to 1080, if I can find it. There it is. Let's hit apply and we'll hit back. And if we go back into our settings here, um, some of this is a little bit messed up especially the way that this resolution setting is progressing. 
So let's go ahead and hit apply again. And if we go through our settings here, it's saving all of these settings. If we hit back and we exit out, I'm going to relaunch it again and we'll see if it's saved. Now, one of the reasons this is happening is because it's going to copy over the save game file that it actually creates in the newer version, but it won't necessarily copy all the save data within that save game file. So we kind of have to force it to uh, recreate that. And after we recreate the save and reload it again, it should fix all of the issues we're going to be having in this menu here. So it does carry over all the saved information. So I'm just going to go ahead and set this all back to high and apply it. And if we go into our new game, we're going to want to go ahead and test out and see if everything is functioning like it should. So our guys are patrolling around like they should. They detected me. I can take cover. And I can move around. And you're going to want to definitely thoroughly play with this to make sure that it does what it's supposed to do. And we'll make sure that I can damage these guys, which I just destroyed one. So the damage is working. And we'll go ahead and run around these guys a little bit and see if we can force them to change positions. And so they're generally doing what they're supposed to be doing. So that's definitely good for us. So I'm going to go in ahead and uh, Alt F4 out of the project. And it looks like we have a generally good change to the 4.12. Now I'm going to throw in some huge caveats here. When upgrading the project, your upgrade may not turn out the same as mine. I have had experience with upgrading projects in the past where an upgrade will occur and essentially I'll spend weeks trying to troubleshoot the project to find out what changed between the versions and what's causing the differences. So far I don't think we've used anything that is really going to cause a huge effect on our project from upgrading to the latest version. So everything as is seems pretty well and good. So. I'm going to consider this a success. Now, if you end up having problems with upgrading your project, I don't have a lot of help for you, honestly. Uh, and the reality behind this is that the amount of variables that go around in the background are so insanely massive, and the changes that they make to the blueprints are so insanely massive that if you have done anything differently than I have done, there are just way too many things for me to be able to process that or to know what's going on. So if you're running different characters and you made additions to the blueprints and whoever knows what else you've added to your own version of the project, um, that is going to cause me to basically not be able to troubleshoot your project. So essentially, if you're having problems with it, you're going to have to work whatever it is that is causing that issue and try and figure out what's causing that issue. Um, for general things, I may be able to help, but I can't guarantee that I would be able to. So that's going to complete today's video. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below or hit me up on Facebook. And thanks for watching.